Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and we're continuing the mini series on the Curse Workbench video 4 and this is a two part video and we're going to be looking at the create support in plane for sketches and we're going to be looking at some of these tools along here as well such as the split curve and the parametric line and we'll be creating such surfaces as this fuselage or boat hull here you can see the profiles that we've got going through this and these support a number of sketches that are sitting on there along with a nerve surface there and you can see how that's been made up we'll also be looking at Another example where we're replacing a wire or a containing element that is rooted through this cavity, again with the use of profiles and a loft. So there's the profiles, here's the loft, here's the sketches of the loft. So our first video deals with the actual techniques of doing these. And our second video will go through creating each of these objects and how you go about doing those. So I hope you're enjoying the series and let's get a start on this episode. If you like this video, please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. So before we get into the plane tool, I'm just gonna go through a few other tools that we'll be using in this episode. And this is for making structures that we can add the planes to. For instance, if I had a body, so we come into our part design and I'm just going to quickly create a body in here. This can be something very simple. It's just going to be a square with a hole for it, like so, and pad it up. I'm just going to put quite a bit of a pad in there, like so. Now I want to get in here and add planes across here, but I haven't got anything to attach it to. I've got one line here that I can add the plane to, but I need two lines to actually add the plane. And this is where these tools come in handy. We go back over to the curves. So I'm going to strat out these two circles. So this circle here and this circle in here. Now I'm going to use the split curve. So before in the other episode, we used the join curves tool, which split this out as a single Bezier curve. And we'll just show you that now. If I hide that body, you can see that's a single circle. And it has one vertex just there. Just about see it, we can increase the vertex size if we so desire. So I can come down to view and increase the point size, something like six, and you'll be able to see it there. So that's the join curve. Let's get rid of that. But with the split curve, what I can do is bring this out, splits the selected edge, hide the body. And you can see that we've got two vertexes. So one at the top, one at the bottom, and two edges. And this is configurable because we can double click on there and move this vertex wherever we want. You can see a percentage is coming up. And this is percentage of the split is taken up. And double click to come out and we've got finite control it down here so we can put in 50 percent in here we also can use millimeters if we so desire so if i want to do millimeters in here or if i wanted to do another one at 10 percent you can see we've got three now and those are editable there we go so we're going to edit those just double click on the split i'm going to take those out because i only want one at 50 percent So we've got that there, 
and let's bring back the body and bring in the average and use the split curve on that as well. We've got two split curves. I'm going to hide that body. And what I want to do is bring in an edge along here to allow us to attach the plane to. So to do that, we can use the other tool. So we select vertex, the same on this side, and use the line tool, parametric line. Place the line between them, and we do the same here. Holding down control, select the other one, parametric line. And now we've got a structure that sits inside the body. And I use this in one of the examples, and we'll come to that in a minute. This means that if I select top, we can look straight down on that structure. And what I need is to look straight down on this side. So we can use the rear, come straight down. And I can place a plane across here. So click, control click, and we'll get into this in a moment. This will be our next demonstration that we're doing. Add a plane. Let's add another one. Add this at a separate angle. There we go. So let's add it at an angle. And we'll do one that's straight here as well. So those planes are added. We'll give it a bit of an angle. There we go. So they're taking up half of that structure, which is fine because I can sketch right over here. I'm allowed to actually come off this plane when I sketch. And when we bring back the body, all our sketches will be sitting on that plane and inside this structure. And it just makes it a lot easier to do internal structures and have them hung on some kind of supporting wire or some some kind of or some kind of supporting edge within that structure itself. So we'll look at the plane tool in more detail now. So we're going to start by demonstrating the tool. So I'm going to create a new document and jump over to the curves workbench. Now to use this tool is quite simple. But there are some gotchas, and unless you know how the tool works, it can be quite confusing. So the tool is located on the toolbar here, and it's created a supporting plane for sketches. And also on surface, it's profile support plane. So what this allows you to do is actually attach a profile, which can hold a sketch or a piece of geometry between two wires or two edges. So those can be a sketch, a single wire, or even part of the body. So for instance, let me go into the sketcher and I'm gonna sketch a number of lines in here. So we can go for a piece line. So this is our first line. And I'll be able to show you how the actual tool works as well. And I'm gonna go for a single line. And also I'm gonna go for a polyline. There's a reason why I've picked these three shapes. And I'm going to go for an arc as well. Let's go for an arc in here. So from here to here. So an arc there. So there's a reason why I picked those shapes. And it's because we need to know how this tool works. So let's jump over to the Curse Workbench. And I'm going to look from top down. Now orientation is important and we'll get to that in a minute. So to use the tool, we're going to be selecting one edge and then the other but holding down the control key between now where we select along this edge does matter so for instance if i select in the middle of this curve hold down control and select the top of this line and hit the great support in plane for sketches so that profile you can see a profile has appeared over here has been placed along there now at the moment it just looks like a line but if we add some angle to it you can see that is actually a profile that's been placed along there a plane and you can go back to the top so where we click first is parameter one so we're looking in the actual properties on here on the profile and where we click the second time is parameter two so it's important where you work so if i'm working from left to right 
all the time, then I won't have any problems when I go back and alter these if I so desired this to be in a different position. This alters the position of these two points. But if I mix in, so I'm adding a profile that goes clicking once, clicking twice, and then clicking over here, then clicking here, it starts to get confusing. So just be a bit aware of that when you're creating these profiles. So we're gonna have a look at how these are placed upon here. So this profile has been placed on this Bezier curve and this line. Now it matters what parameter value is placed along here. So we'll look at parameter two, which is this line. And go to that one first, because that's the easiest. If I place this at zero, that will butt it up against that vertex there. Now it's important to understand that you can only select the edge and not the vertex. So if I try to add a plane between this vertex and control clicking this vertex, add a plane, you can see it's gone into error. It's saying down here, name vertex one is not defined. So just get rid of that. So it's always the edge or the wire. Anyway, back to what we were saying before. So you can see parameter two is at zero. So that's where it starts. Now, if I set this something to like 10,000, so it's going to go down to the maximum value of that line, which is 84. Now there's a correlation between that value and the length of this line. So if I jump back into the sketcher, so I double click the sketch, let's have a look at the length of this line. Length of that line is 84.02. And if we close that, we can see that this line that this profile is attached to, the parameter two is 84.02. So that's the length. So that's in correlation to the length of that line. B spline is a bit different. So this B spline here, click on the profile, set the parameter to zero. So we've zeroed that out. Now let's set this to, so let's set this to 1000. You can see that's set to one. So B spline is from zero to one along there. And anything in between is a fraction of that distance. So that's quite important to remember that. The same for this line here. Because it's made up of three edges, then when we attach, so I'm going to attach a profile from here to here. Now something's going to happen here, which I'm going to go into regarding the orientation of the profile. So you can see the profile there, and this profile is a different orientation, but we'll get to that in a minute. If I click on that profile, parameter two is 10.40. So that is in correlation to zero, See it's butt up against the top and go to a thousand and get rounded down to the nearest length, which is 43.33, which if we come into our sketch, you'll see that line is equal to 43.33. So because that's not a Bezier curve, it's a line, it will take the length. Let's try our arc here. So we're going to add a profile between here, control click, around about the middle of the arc, add a profile, profile two there. See the parameter down here. So let's set this to something like 1000, see the maximum. It's gone up to 702. And let's put that to zero. So 606 is the bottom. 6.3, 6 6.4, 6 6.5, 6.6, .6, so all the way up to 7. So that's between 6 and 7 there. So you can see the differences between these. 
of where these are placed and that can, can get quite confusing but there's a couple of tricks around there that we can get around that and I'll show you those later what we're going to do is go back to the positioning of these profiles so I'm going to just get rid of these profiles so we quickly touched upon placement along these lines so where if you click one and you click on the other and the profile they will be placed look how that's placed so we're in slightly off top view so if I click top view you can see that profile is now in a different position so where if we actually create the profile in our different views so our camera projection is like that create the profile then the profile will always be projected away from the camera as though you're looking down on it and that's important when you're going to start modeling along these because it's best to keep in the same view to save confusion but we can change these so that's add one in here and click the profile and you can see the projection is away from the camera I'll get that view there so I click the top again and add another one and control those two you can see that profiles failed because I didn't actually click on the line properly so you have to be right on that line click and click add the profile there we go if ever that happens just delete it out so if we look at these and look at the main axis and this controls the orientation of these profiles this one's got a minus 9.4 on there whereas this one got minus 1 along those that so if I was coming in here and wanted to zero all these out to make them all the same I can multi-select these so I can click one control click the others or even select them all in here come down to main axis and this will be default to the first one that we selected so zero those out everything else that you haven't touched will be fine will be left as it is and we need to make this minus one because at the moment they're all sticking up in the air and we want them to go the other way like so So now those profiles are there, we can actually sketch upon those. So we're coming to the sketcher and create a sketch. And it's always going to go flat face. So you want it always flat face on there. And what happens that places that in that orientation like so. And you can see where that's been sectioned through there. Now it's good to use the section view when I edit my switch between section view and full view whilst here. And that will cut across your objects until we get to the point of origin and the plane that we're sketching upon another thing that i like to do is go into the profiles and just change the transparency of them so we can come down to the view and come down to object style i believe it's under there are transparency and just bring this down so we can see through it there we go so I know now that I'm sketching upon this plane here, so you can see the plane. Now when we're sketching, it's important to understand that the edges of the plane intersect the rails that we selected or the edges of the object we selected, whether it's single lines or an object. And we can also import those lines. So importing those edges of the planes means that when we import them, like so, we get the vertex that intersects that line there. So we know anything we attach to that will be sitting on this rail or this edge. Same for the other side, bring that in. And you can see it there. The other thing to remember is when you're sketching upon these, is that if we add a sketch like so 
it doesn't matter if it juts out the top of the plane like it's sitting there sitting above the plane that is still a valid sketch so I hit escape now and go to close you can see that's sitting along there and we can just add sketches as we go flat face okay using the section view importing any geometry like the edges if we so desire if we want to attach to anything to those rails or those edges so for instance I've imported those in so I'm going to create a arc and I've got the auto constraints on so they will attach there and there and create the arc like so close that and you can see that that's sitting there so that's valid this one's valid so as long as they're along that plane then we can use this for lofts, extrudes, etc. So I can extrude that if I so desire that sketch there. Come into the part and extrude that. Okay, so that's extruded along there. Or we could loft through, etc. So that's the video of actually how to use the tool. What we'll do now is take some practical examples and demonstrations and learn how we can use the create a supporting plane for sketches and the split curves and also the parametric line in the sample of our bulk hole also could be used for a fuselage and to root or a loft through this cavity here and out the other side so that's already on the channel so if you look on there now, there will also be a link on this video to it, and I'll see you in there shortly. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site, and also I have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is, and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site, and all the money that I actually get from, any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.